Hi, this is Professor Charlie Evans, and I'm going to talk about the Cold War today. It's a period of time roughly from sometime in 1945 to sometime in 1990 or sometime in 1995, or no end date. Some historians would argue that the Cold War continues to this very day. And the Cold War is essentially the tension between the United States and Russia, or the tension, as historians used to say, between the free world and the communist world. The entire Cold War is characterized by back and forth activities between the United States and Russia. When the United States acted in, in some fashion somewhere in the world or in the United States itself, Russia reacted. When Russia the so or the Soviet Union took some sort of action somewhere in the world, the United States act, act reacted. And so this back and forth between the two powers characterized is the Cold War. Um, in a manner of speaking, you could actually push back the start of the Cold War to the seizure of power by the Bolsheviks and the establishment of the communist regime in Russia in 1917-1918, because one of the first things that the communist regime did was nationalize all industries, all assets in the country at the time, and there were significant assets by United States citizens, British citizens, French citizens at the time, and they lost everything. And in addition, the, Bol the new Bolshevik regime promised to undertake communist revolution throughout the entire world and overthrow democracies everywhere in the world, and actively tried to do that. And so the combination of the two, uh, the nationalization of assets in Russia, the attempt to promulgate communist revolutions in the world, set the communist and, and democratic regimes in the world at, od at odds with each other. And it really wasn't until 1933 when the United States finally recognized the communist regime in Russia, and that was rather unwillingly. And so the kind of laden hostility between the United States and Russia really goes back much earlier. Um, the wartime alliance was really an alliance of convenience. Um, uh, there were different war aims on both sides, but the United States was willing to cooperate uh, with the Soviet Union because their, their common enemy was uh, Hitler's Germany. And so as uh, President Roosevelt throughout the war continued to send equipment and continued to work with Stalin in an attempt to defeat Hitler, even though the, the kind of long-term aims of both the United States and Russia were really not in agreement. And that became clear after the war, and that's when the Cold War s started because um, the, com the, the Soviet Union controlled all of Eastern Europe as a result of the advance of the Red Army after the war. And as a result of that control, the Soviet Union made sure that communist regimes came to power in all the countries of Eastern and Central Europe, and most specifically in Poland. Now, this was something that the United States and the British had hoped after the war that there would be free and democratic elections in all these countries. And from the, United, the American and British points of view, that was not what was happening, that the communist regimes were being installed with the help of um, the Soviet Union. And so that really started the Cold War, especially in Poland, when, when a free and democratic Poland did not come into existence in 1946. In 1948, the Soviet Union closed off access to the West Berlin sectors. And the image that you see on, uh, as part of the video is a image of American supply planes landing at Tempelhof Airport in Berlin. And so when access was closed off to the city, the United States and British decided that they would supply the city by air. The city of a million and a half, two million people had to be completely supplied by American and British and French supply planes. That was an enormous undertaking when it began in June of 1948 and lasted through the winter into the spring of 1949 when the Soviet Union lifted the blockade. The fact that the Soviet Union had instituted this blockade clearly indicated that tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union had escalated dramatically in just three years after World War II. In 1949, Chinese communists seized power in China, and in 1950, the Korean Revolution the Korean War breaks up when North Korea invades South Korea. And so within five years after the, the end of the war and the defeat of Hitler and the defeat of Japan, clearly there were significant tensions existing in the world 
between the United States and Russia, and that's the Cold War. The fact that both sides had nuclear weaponry by 1940, 1950 exasperated the sense of tension in the war and led both sides to begin to escalate their nuclear weaponry in an attempt to get a leg up, to get some sort of advantage, perceived advantage over the, uh, their perceived opponent, opponent and everything. And so the state of tension exists really until 1985. The, the change mechanism or the change maker is the death and death of the communist general secretary in the Soviet Union and Mikhail Gorbachev becomes a new general secretary. And he had a completely different agenda as general secretary of the party. Idea of perestroika and glasnost, which I go into some detail in other places in the course and everything. But one of the key decisions that Gorbachev makes is that in 1985, as because of the state of the Soviet economy, it would be better off for the Soviet Union and the Communist Party in the Soviet Union if tensions with the Western world were reduced. And as a result of negotiations between himself and Reagan, you had the start of events that would lead to the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the, I guess we could use the term, liberation of the regimes of Eastern Europe, the collapse of the communist regimes in Eastern Europe through 1988, 1989, 1990, uh, the establishment of allegedly free and free, I'm not going to use the word democratic in all these regimes and everything, but you did have uh, free elections in most of the countries, a new regime set up, and the peeling back of the Iron Curtain, which Winston Churchill had alleged to have dropped over Eastern and Central Europe in, 19, in 1946, and the symbolic bringing down of the Berlin Wall, the unification of East and West Germany, and perhaps the end of the Cold War, although tensions between uh, the United States and Russia continue really to this day. The level of military antagonism and military force that was in place during much of the Cold War has eased dramatically. And so we look back here at this image of the American supply planes lined up in 1948 to supply Berlin as part of the Berlin airlift. And the whole point of the airlift was to avoid a direct confrontation with the Soviet Union. And that was really one of the hallmarks of the Cold War, the entire span of the Cold War, was to not allow a direct military ground confrontation between the two sides, which might then escalate and lead to nuclear destruction. Okay.